Hey everybody, good morning. Martin Chuck here for an episode of Modern Golf. This is week 11, crazy, crazy time. We're gonna have some fun today, kind of going over things. We've got the golf updates, of course, this week. Guess who's in the hunt again? Tony Finau, fantastic. Tony Finau, we've got Michael Thompson, is leading the tournament. Matthew Wolf is T6. Come on, Matthew Wolf, you got this. So interesting to watch that kid play. Super exciting. I love watching that move he's got and that loopy swing. He swings his own swing. We're going to talk about that later because we've gotten in the Why You Suck segment. We've got somebody who sucks live in the studio. Producer Steve. You're going to see Producer Steve live in the studio. It's going to be fun. You know what? Good athlete just needs a little refining, a little bumping back into the lane. Well, I don't think he had a lane to begin with, but let's show him where the lane is, and then we'll bump him back into it. And I know you're right there, Steve, and I am mocking you, and he is in the room. And we will mask up, and we will have a safe environment for this lesson. So just talking about the week in golf, you know, Tiger last week, quiet week, played, finished his round, kind of, you know, nobody around, no Tiger crowds. And it was like, what is that? Crickets? That's crickets. But it was interesting, two weeks in a row having the same golf tournament, or well, playing a tournament at the same course. A memorial at Jack's place, and I love Jack. And Jack uh, had COVID and got through COVID, so way to go, Jack and Barbara. They both had it, and they're both doing great. Um, another COVID person, I, Nick Watney, T8 this week, and he's doing great. So way to go, Nick. Um, now I'm sorry, I just had something happens to me once in a while, and I get a thought. You know, hockey's starting next week, so next week we'll have to get this hockey stick out. And for those of you who don't know how to pop somebody in the shins just right, or a little cross check. That'll be a lesson for next week. And I use hockey sticks all the time in my teaching. Kind of brings me back to my home country of Canada. Now I'm a proud U.S. citizen. I voted to get up there and vote, y'all. Hear that? And let's have some fun this week with, what do we got? We got the golf updates, the tournament. We have the 3M event. It's in Blaine, Minnesota. So hopefully they're having a good time up there at TPC Twin Cities. Um, this week's all about tour level swing. Okay, that, I know that sounds like a, everybody wants a tour level swing. Let me tell you what goes into a tour level swing in this episode. And some of you aren't gonna like it. You know why? Because it requires a little bit of insight, reflection, work, getting with a great coach near you. My preference, a PGA member, PGA member right here, baby, 25 years. Yeah, long time. But getting with a coach near you and actually putting in some mindful work. When I beat up on producer Steve here in a little bit, you'll know what it's like. Come take a lesson from me. I'm a nice guy, but I hold you to task because I want you to get way better. That's a big, big deal. So let's see what happens this week in the tournament. Michael Thompson, good luck. Richie Rorinsky, Tony Finau right there again. Now, I, I, I couldn't do this show if I didn't talk about my, my buddy Boyd Summerhays. Boyd Summerhays always look, dresses like this, actually. He always wears black, and I'm trying not to copy a Boyd, but just kind of on camera, it suits up pretty well. And Boyd went out in shorts this week, okay? And then he looked like an Italian tourist because he had those socks up to there and this little bit of skin right here. And I'm, I can make fun of Italians because I'm quarter Italian. And so he had this much of his very, very Utah skin tone right here. And let me tell you, it looked like his knees won the bobbing for chicken wing contest. Like he dipped him in the hot oil after the round. It was hysterical. It's actually been a social media buzz because the golf channel said, Tony's playing well, but let's pan over to Boyd's knees. And then Boyd's son, Preston Summerhays, shot a gazillion under par to win the Sunahan Amateur this week. What's going on with this, this family? It's amazing. Congratulations on the awesomeness. So let's get into it, y'all. Put down my device. Talk about building a tour level swing. Go into my notes here so don't miss anything because I want this show to be right on point. The routine building, hands, stance, how your body moves. You know, I, I've got this great kid. My son goes to PGA Junior League at a course just south of me here. I live in the suburbs of Phoenix. I'm in Chandler, Arizona. Just south, there's a great course, Lone Tree Golf Club. The, the owner and PGA member, Greg, Greg Avant is a buddy of mine. He plays in my men's league hockey team too. He's a stud, very, very, very good golfer and a very good hockey player. And his son, Tommy, is up in the, in the, in the Mets section doing really well in the tournaments up there. So my son's doing junior league and he's doing great. And all these kids are learning things that are gonna take them through their life of golf. And I don't care if you're 11 like my son or you're 61, 51, 71. 
you guys and gals out there can learn to do a few of these things nicely. So please, please, please don't take these this lightly. When you're putting your good hands on the club, and I say, put your good hands on the club. You know why? Because most people don't put good hands on clubs. They have a shortcut when it relates to their grip. And you say, you know, Martin, I've been watching a few episodes now, and you mentioned this a lot. Can you just get over it? And I say, no, I cannot get over it because the way you hold the golf club, people, dictates so much of the rhythm, the timing, the event of how you move this thing. Let me do my Martin Chuck warm up here, which you should really take a bit more seriously, but I'll just hit a, I've hit a couple balls into the screen. Let's go schwack one of my, my new clubs here, my Hamas. I love these guys. Let's pepper one down there. Let's go to Foresight. Let's check out some numbers and let's talk about some of the reliability features as we start to build your tour level swing. You're gonna get a bunch of drills today to help you go to the range and work on some of these things that are gonna help you get really reliable. And it's gonna be hard work. Mild miss it, not gonna lie. Going pretty straight, that's good. That's probably gonna be a little short. Should fly 150, I don't think it's going to. And what do we go? Let's see, 147. Uh, yeah, see, mild miss hit right there. Going to the numbers here. Let's see what the numbers have to say. So that fractionally high in the face, which means I chunked it a little bit. Ball speed a little bit low. Club speed 90 for an eight iron. That's about right. But that carry number's off. That carry number's off about 10 yards. So, you know, that was just a little bit, a wee bit of a chunker. Let me hit one, one a little bit better than that. And that's low point control, you guys. Even when you're a pretty seasoned golfer like myself, getting to the bottom of your swing at the right place, that's a huge part of being an effective golfer. Let's hit one more. That was a little bit better. Fraction to the right, I could feel that before I even looked up. And that's functionally on the green. A little putt from the right side of the green back toward the pin. We're gonna go to the numbers here. Let those bad boys populate. What do we get, 152, eight iron, that's about right. A little bit early in the morning for, uh, for ripping it. A little bit thin on the face, downward, so into out, two degrees, four degrees down, backspin 8,600, that's a green stopper, pretty straight shot, that's what we like, and that's what I want. I want you to have that. I want you to have the tour level elements in your swing. So getting right to it, building a great grip, really quickly, just two minutes on this, just give me, a, or not even, let's make sure when we get our left hand on the golf club people, if you look at how I'm building my grip, I'm building my grip in the position of P6, meaning that the back of my left wrist is flattish, maybe even mildly bowed, okay, mildly bowed. The toe of the club is not vertical, it's tipped downward just a little bit. And then from there, once you get your left hand on from this position, and then you go ahead and say, well, where's the golf ball? And you rotate your left wrist and set up behind a golf ball, you'll have a mildly bent back lead wrist, your thumbprint will be on the top right quadrant of the grip. Let's do that one more time. And then from there, you can go ahead and put your right hand on. And the left hand acts as a placeholder for the right hand. When you get your left hand on nicely, you can get your right hand on nicely. Now again, visiting one little thing that I cannot stand drives me crazy, it's like people who litter, is this. We do not want you, when you interlock a grip, please do not go webbing to webbing because it puts his right hand, looks like you're doing something that is not stylish, that's not gonna let you articulate the club head well to hit great shots. If you are an interlocker, it's just basically tippy tippy right here at the index finger and the pinky, and that lets you get in that junior golf gang sign right there. You wanna get in the club at Martin Chuck's Golf Academy? You wanna get in the front door of your kid? You gotta flash me the sign. That's where that right thumb of yours or that trail thumb of yours is beside your palm. Not over here, beside your palm, and then hook that index finger around because that right there is Ben Hogan. That right there is Bobby Jones. That's Jack Nicholas. That's Tiger Woods. That's every golfer that's a great golfer right there. He's got that good looking trail hand. And as you develop your grip, you're gonna have great appreciation for people that have taken care to do that. Most tour players, 99 out of 100, have good looking hands on the golf club, maybe by nature or nurture, who knows which. Probably a little bit of nurture, maybe a little bit of nature, but somebody said, hey son or hey, hey young woman, let's get your hands on the club properly and you're gonna be better off. And that's probably why they developed into the massively skilled player. Now, you can tell I had about four coffees this morning, I'm highly caffeinated, and this is passionate to me. So once we get our good hands on the golf club to build that tour level swing, let's do the next part up. Let's get our arms 
You saw what I did there? This is coming, I'm getting my arms up in front of my body. I'm not gonna stand to the golf ball all cozy like I'm in a shootout. I guess this isn't how people would be in a shootout. They'd probably be a bit more like this. But my elbows are not on my sides, they're in front of me. I call this volleyball arms. If I was gonna bump past a volleyball, it'd be like this. Well, guess what? If I put my good hands together on there, my arms are together, I could bump pass to some guy who's gonna smash it down inside the attack line on your side of the net. So let's get those volleyball arms on there. Good hands, volleyball arms. And then we're gonna talk about routine a little bit. We're gonna check on producer Steve here, see how he does. And we're gonna see if we can take that and waggle this. Notice my arm, the club's not on the ground. My arms aren't on my side. Volleyball arms, a little bit of waggle. Why am I waggling? I'm waggling so I can feel the weight of the club. Aaron Overholzer, okay, great player. Um, career that was trajectory positive. Hurt his wrist, kind of had to back out of the tour. You've probably seen him on the Golf Channel. He's like me, he does some ads for some training products and things. He's a great voice in golf. Somehow in Twitter recently, we we're talking about the waggle, talking about the, do coaches actually teach people to waggle and do they teach people to hover the golf club? Well, this coach does and always has. Why? Because my mentor, George Knudsen, taught me day one. And people go, Martin, why do you, why do you make me take, have the club off the ground? Because I want you to feel the weight of the club in your hands. And they may, that may feel awkward for you for a little while because everybody likes to kind of take the club, set that club on the ground, get in here, go ahead and play flute on the grip, and then to move the club, guess what you have to do? You have to grab it, and then you have to go. At my golf school, which you really ought to come to, by the way, get cranking in October, there's my pitch. It's a fun time. I'm gonna be there on you the whole time, helping you get better, okay? But let's get your good hands on the grip. Let's get your arms together volleyball style, and take a look in the right screen. My trail arm is a little softer than my lead arm, and the club is off the ground, people. This is a waggle. This is how you start to feel the weight of the club. And that's programming, helping the brain kind of figure out where you are in space, proprioception. And then go ahead and give it a go. Send one out there, okay? Have a little fun, but you need to feel the weight of the club waggling in your hands to be the reliable golfer you want to be, to have that tour level swing. So, commonalities of good players. Biggest commonality I see, the delivery position. You could be on the either end of the spectrum, okay, in many, many, many places. You've got Arizona golfer. Oh, Michael Thompson, Tucson guy, by the way. Uh, Ches Reeve, local guy to this area, Chandler, Mesa area. You've got Ches, who's got this look in his backswing, where he whips the club kind of inside of P2. But yet, guess what? His delivery position, P6, gorgeous. You've got Matthew Wolf, okay, the Wolf. You've got this event where he does this with the pelvis, gets the club way outside, and guess what? P6 looks pretty good. What's the commonality there, P6? Guess the club is shafts pretty parallel to the target line, this barber pole on the ground right here. The face isn't wide open, the face is vertical or a little pitched closed, and that's kind of a matchup with your grip. The pelvis is a little bit open, okay? The body's still in a forward flex about to go into what we call rotated side bend. So these events are commonalities among the best players. Can you do that right away? I think not. I think that you can do that with some intention, some understanding and some drills. And from there, that's a big, big deal. Now, we have 14 clubs in the bag. You have a putter and you have a driver and everything in between. And the way you hit those is mildly different. The driver, when you pull the head cover off that thing, guess what? You gotta get kinda amped up because you athletically have to be ready to give that thing a smash. Now when you're hitting, say, an eight iron and you're uh, 125 or 145 or 185, so like some of the kids I coach that can really swing it fast, that's a different physical feeling and that's okay and you have to mentally prepare driver something you're gonna smash. If you take the head cover off the driver, you're getting in the ring for about a, a, you know, a 40 second event to athletically smash it. Don't, don't try to hit a soft driver. 
Give a driver the full treatment, mash it out there. If you don't feel confident giving it the full treatment, guess what? Hit another club, hit a hybrid or three wood off the tee. But if you're gonna pull the driver, give it what it deserves, full speed, full athleticism. Now, when you're hitting irons like this, say I wanted to hit a into the wind situation. Let's go to TrackMan, Steve, and I had a into the wind kind of flighted shot. Maybe I'm knocking one down a little bit and I'm gonna hit something like 140-ish in the air, it might look something like this. You know, and I'm telling that thing, maybe get up a couple yards, go, 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 go. Okay, 137 maybe, I don't even know what the numbers are, but I'm gonna, what did we get here? Let's have it populate. We had a situation where, what did it fly? Well, wow, total, yeah, 138. So you think I've done this a little bit when I can hit it and kind of tell you how far, it, that, that feeling of how far it flew? Right, so this is where you guys need to be artists with this. One club doesn't mean, oh, this is my eight iron, therefore it's my 150 club. No, it's my 100 club, it's my 165 club, it might be my 200 club. Okay, why would it be my 200 club? Because I'm really strong and I work out. No, because the situation downwind, uh, a certain grass conditions, when you're a good player, you get to be a tremendous reader of the lie. You might have a bit of a flyer lie. Flyer lies are low spin relationships face the ball. The ball goes, launches high and stays up in the air a long time. That's kind of a tour player scary one right there because if they have that little flyer situation where the ball is sitting up in the rough, the shot you guys love it for the most part, they're the ones scared of that. They're like, oh my gosh, this ball may never come down. The club golfer's like, oh boy, look at that, sitting up nice and purdy for me to whack it. The problem is, again, you get that low spin, high launch ball that flies really well, you go, Helium chest, look at how far I just hit my seven iron. Yeah, that's me. The problem is you don't, you can't control the distance. You know, aside from wearing out the golf clubs, I'd way rather hit it off a cart path than I'd hit it out of that semi rough because off a cart path, at least I know how far it's gonna go, okay? Now, my sponsors might be mad at me, Hanma, if I had to say, hey, I've been practicing off a cart path, you need to send me a new eight iron. And people say, Martin, you know, wouldn't you hurt yourself hitting off a cart path? And I go, nope, because the next piece of tour level swing, think about this. If I have this great delivery position, you guys, and this is where I want you to build your swing from, this great looking delivery position. Get your good hands on, build your grip, do what I'm doing here, and then kind of feel this pelvis rock a little bit to highlight that. Let me take an aim stick. We're gonna use this a lot for our drills later. Let me take one of these. I've got my plane mate band. My plane mate band is so helpful for so many things. I'm gonna loop one of these around here, pop this bad boy on. That way you've got a, a better visual for what I'm doing here and how you're going to develop these feelings. Wasn't there a Barbara Streisand song, Feelings? I might break out in song right now. But so here's P6 and notice how I can stand in here and just kind of start to get that pelvis to open a little. Okay, you look at good players, you're gonna see this. And there's differentiation. You get the music going, I can get it right on beat for you if you want to, okay? But I want you to feel that sensation. A little bit of my weight's in my lead foot. That's a great primer, a great starter to understand. I'll do it to the face on and change angles for you a little bit. The sensation, that feeling of the pelvis unwinding to make room for this bent trail arm, okay? High level players, you guys, start off with their arms generally long and comfortably in front of them. Well, it may not be comfortable if you're in volleyball arms for the first time, but in this situation right here, but at impact, what do you notice about my trail arm? It's still a little bent at the elbow and it's certainly bent at the wrist. It's in the act of straightening. So impact's not a static position, it's something you flow through. But to understand these, building your swing from this P6 position, hitting some little shots, trying to feel what it's like to let that pelvis open a little, because all too often at the golf school, starting in October, come see us. We have a joke with the coaches. Is this, we always say, is this another episode of Address or Impact? And why we always have a little bit of a laugh with that is because a lot of golfers, great, great, actually pretty functional golfers shoot 
80-ish, 85, which a lot of you want to do, but they can be better because they don't have the right sequence to really smash it. Their address looks awkwardly like their impact. I'll stop them at impact. They'll look exactly as they looked at address. Versus a high-level player, you're going to see this situation where the pelvis is more unwound, the trail shoulder is closer to what they're hitting, much like, like any other sport, like a baseball bat, you're gonna unwind, the trail shoulder gets closer to the bat meeting the ball. A slap shot, hockey starting next week, yes! When the trail shoulder gets closer to the ice to compress and bend that stick into the ice for a nice slap shot. So when we make people aware of these little revelations, they go, oh, okay, that's interesting. I'm gonna have the nerve to practice that in front of you, Martin, because I don't care if you miss. You care if you miss, I don't. I just wanna expand the possibilities of you becoming a better golfer. So down the lines of becoming a tour level swinger, okay? We need to understand and getting a stick kind of around your booty like this, or you can take this and kind of fit it through the eyelets or your belt loops, but if you have a plane mate, the band works fantastic for that. We're gonna get into that later with your home drills, okay? Trying to stay on task here. Uh, mental prep talked about that for the driver versus the irons. The driver, you gotta feel like, okay, come on, I'm gonna send this. Don't hit drivers easy, smash it. And it feels good too. You know, you don't wanna be a sissy with the driver. You wanna kind of send it. Irons, you be a craftsperson, okay? Um, let's see, hands, stance, rotation, different clubs. Tour level swingers, guys. Big, big deal here. Let me get my old smart ball out. And, you know, super honored this week. There was a bit that the PGA produced, and it had Justin Rose, okay? Classy fella. So Justin Rose did something, I guess maybe Zurich Insurance is one of his big sponsors. And so there is Justin on the range hitting some golf balls. And I'm not sure when they filmed this, actually. And there's this lovely guy right behind him in the Pro-Am who probably felt like, oh my gosh, the cameras are on me. Justin Rose is right here. This dude's, you know, five steps behind him over here. And Justin's kind of waxing poetic about his, his routine with the smart ball. Because you're not going to see tour players with a lot of this behavior as they approach impact. They're, cre they're creating this gently long condition in their arms. They're learning how to govern that reliably. And let me explain. You know, to have power, we have to have some trail arm bending. There's no doubt about it. We have to have some body rotation. Fantastic. But so many golfers kind of overdo this, create way too many angles they cannot undo. So when you create too many angles you can't undo, you're highly unreliable. Now, you might say, well, Martin, man, I have a, I have a hard time using that ball. And I had this lovely lady call me on my cell phone, got to me through my company website and got my cell phone and said, Martin, I can't use that ball. It doesn't work for me. And I said, I understand it doesn't work for you, and that's okay, we'll give you a full refund. But here's the reality. Your body's not really working for you. Because if I just had you take this ball, hold it in your arms, and rotate, you'd be able to do this all day long, okay? The, the issue is, when we get a little tight, as we, and she was a little bit older, and, and when you get a little more in a forward flex, you know, hip hinge, heart to the ground, and then you start to do this, don't think for a second I'm not feeling that right there, people. Okay, I'm not Gumby, I'm not a rubber band. This event of rotating in my address posture right there, ee, that's hard. Okay, that takes some muscular awareness, some control, some flexibility. I had two men's league hockey games this past week. This dude's kind of beat up from that, actually. So this event of holding this and moving this, this is tour level arm structure. Okay, you're not gonna see a whole bunch of this on tour. You'll see it occasionally, but then they're amazing at fitting that in. Rather, you're gonna see managing these arms because if you manage your arms, guess what's a great byproduct of managing your arms? Your wrist conditions become more reliable. So when you can manage your arms, you can manage your wrists. When you can manage your wrists, you have better control of the face, and guess what you get? Tour level swing elements. Now, maybe you don't have the speed, I don't have this speed anymore, but you can have great strikes and beautiful control of your golf ball. So we're about to get into Steve here. This is going to be awesome in the Why You Suck episode, and he's in the room. So you're going to see some live lesson stuff, but let's go ahead and hit a little shot with the smart ball. 
This sensation of feet on the ground naturally, they wouldn't be up in the sky. A little bit of waggling, controlling this ball, collecting the white thing on the ground with this golf club. Okay, and managing that ball the whole time, it's within my arms. And again, most golfers, the first time they use this, here's what you'll hear, thwap. They'll hit it really heavy. Huh, why did I chunk it, they'll think quizzically. Because their body is so used to moving down toward the ground and separating your arms. Roger B from back east. Roger, I'm talking to you, buddy, okay? I was going to put your swings in the Why You Suck episode this week, but I'm not going to do it. Um, Roger came to a golf school a, a few years back now. Great fella, good golfer. You know, father time has never lost a fight, right? So all of us are getting older. Roger's got one of these swings. When he came to see me, he could hit it quite well, but he had a lot of this squeeze box elbows going in and out, a lot of this staying down too long, managing his elbows at the bottom rather than... And what if he did, and this is why most people chunk it with a smart ball, because they manage their swing radius, the center of their chest to the sole of the golf club by staying down too long, because that's what they were told when they were a young adult or whoever taught them. And then they manage their radius by separating their elbows and they have this inconsistent relationship to the turf ball on the ground. And maybe they hit it out there okay. So it looks like this in slow-mo. Do, 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 do. Elbow separate, body stalls. They maybe hit a decent shot. And then maybe they have some kind of phony baloney finish, okay? But we want to have arms that are like, sometimes I use the reference elephant trunk. Imagine my two arms wrapped in like nice gray colored elephant skin leather. Not real, elephant pleather for those of you out there. But this is, I want this condition, these arms kind of feeling like they're swinging, like, an, like they're not gonna buckle. My elbows don't buckle, my body rotates. And here's the thing, to not chunk it, guess what I'm doing in the next piece is like all tour players, pushing off the ground and rotating. So when you look at the, look at the right screen and the left screen, two vastly different things happening. I'm staying in my forward flex, okay, and to a degree, but my left, my left side is stood up and my right side is side bent like crazy. Let me keep that angle and face the camera. Okay, this is basically what I look like at impact. I started like this. Guess what my backswing looks like? It looks like this. So this is the side bending of a golf swing. Okay, this is tricky to do. That's why the smart ball really helps with that. Okay, learn how to move your arms in a nice relationship and stretch out. And if you have a hard time with that, guess what's fantastic for that? The plane mate, my belt, rubber band. You want a tour level swing, you get yourself one of those and you stretch out and you can hit some shots, some fantastic shots. So without further ado, that's my drum roll, okay? Because we're working on some bells and whistles and production value in here, okay? That's what you get today. Let's go to the why you suck. Show me, let's take a look. Here's Steven. This is an athletic event. Let's play this a couple times. This is so that so this you know what this guy's guy's got some rhythm. I bet you at a dance after a cocktail or two, he is out there doing his thing and looking good out there. But let's watch this swing again. So this is rhythm. He's got good speed, and that ball is gonna go out there and peel right, 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 right of the right, right in the red zone over there. Okay. So there we go. Going to the right, slicey, slicers in, or maybe a big pull. Now, when you see that swing, guess what you're seeing right there, people? You're seeing, hoo, 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 let me see, let me, let me fly paper airplanes between these elbows and the backswing. And then I'm gonna use that athleticism to get the club on the ball. So you know what, we can stop looking at that for right now. I'm gonna have him come up here in just a second. But I can tell from that video, okay? And for those of you that sent in videos for why you suck, thank you, I can't get to them all, but I appreciate it. I just thought it'd be fun for y'all to see a live lesson. Most of you are like, no, no, Martin, I wanted you to see my lesson. But th there's what I call the pickle jar test. You know what the pickle jar test is? You can open a pickle jar. Steven's clearly a pickle jar opener. He looks like he's got a nice rhythmic, strong swing. He's played like three times. So some people are just like, they, Jim Hardy, famous coach, uses his expression, kind of a freaky one. There's cats and dogs. You throw a dog up in the air, you gotta take it to the vet. You throw a cat up in the air, it lands on all fours and looks at you funny. Okay, well, he's clearly a cat, even though he's allergic to them miserably. I'm kidding. 
But he's got athletic ability, which is fantastic from a life in sports. Some of you don't have a life in sports. I'll say to people when they come to my golf school, what did you play in high school? Some people say nothing. I was on the chess team. And I said, well, that's, you know, elbow articulation, right? That's good. There's positives there. But usually somebody's talking about baseball, football, soccer, running, jumping, cheerleading. Yeah, don't take that for granted. I'll tell you what, you meet some cheerleaders, they're running, tumbling, jumping, spinning, dancing, massively coordinated athletes, okay? The cheerleaders are fantastic. And I love musicians. You know why I love musicians? Because musicians have suffered. Nobody sits in front of a piano and just busts it out. You suck at piano. You earn piano. Like golf, you earn it. So, Stephen, would you kind of come on up here? Oh, you know what? Just in being respectful, social distancing, and you know, I'm a loudmouth, so you can hear me. I'm gonna pop the oh, I'm gonna pop the old mask on here and then introduce Stephen. So come on up, everybody. So I should have a big tour striker deal on. So Stephen, how are you, bud? Doing well. Well, elbow tap, fantastic. Come on up here. Let's just take a look at your grip for the moment. Okay, now he sat back here and produced the show, and he's obviously way taller than me because the camera doesn't fit in the field. But go ahead and let's see this grip, buddy. Let's see this left hand. I'm gonna walk in front of the cameras a little bit, and I'm gonna take a look. So here's a good example. So Stephen, I love you, right? But And he's been watching the show for how long? You relax for a second. Let's have a chit-chat. That grip, if you held a fork and a knife like you held that golf club, you'd starve to death, okay? So let's get these, let's get this club in your hands. First off, you're not getting my junior golf gang sign. Let's go ahead and put these hands. That's better, okay? That's better. We'll disinfect. Perfect. So see that? That right thumb against your palm, you're going to go ahead and hinge that index finger, and that's great, okay? Now, you just keep that in mind for a second. We're going to take this left hand, get it on the golf club with this face vertical as though you had a suitcase in hand. So relax this arm there, big guy. If you're walking through the airport holding a suitcase handle, you might kind of put your thumb over here to hold the suitcase, wouldn't you? Right. Well, the change we're going to make is we're going to put that thumb in the top right quadrant of the grip. That's great. And now notice how you have, if I take this lead arm of yours, put it up in front of you, right? And you can push your booty back a bit and tip over just a little bit. Man, if I hit him with a stick, he'd be like glass. He'd crumple right now. He's so tense. You relax, mister. It's all good. Get this humerus up in front of you. Fantastic. I'm going to move over here. There we go. That's a good looking left hand. Now, give me this right hand. You've got good sized hands. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this pinky and we're going to go and just go into what we call an overlap grip. There, my friend, is a good looking pair of mitts that you can be proud of. And I'm just going to strengthen that up just a sliver. Now, do you see how this right thumb right here is restfully on the other side of the shaft? Awesome. No, we don't want this guy there. You played a lot of baseball, didn't you? Okay. Did you ever put your thumb down the baseball bat? No. Never. Oh. It always went over there. But in golf, everybody so wants to kind of put their thumb down to kind of guide that thing. New, no, new, no, new, no, new, no, new. No. Okay. So that looks quite nice. So give me a bit more volleyball arms, elbows a little closer together. Awesome. And then soften this guy a tick. Now let's bend you over just a wee bit. We're gonna take this thing, put it out of the way, because I'm not gonna ask you to hit balls in front of everybody. Narrow the stance up about six inches. Amazing, now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take you from this very good looking address position, soften that elbow just a wee bit, awesome. And I'm gonna show you how to rotate and stand up. So rotate and stand up. And these arms would be still together, buns under you, and you'd still be in a bit of a side bend, good. So is that doable for you? I think so. I think so too. I think you look fantastic, okay? So that's a great looking semi follow through. So no backswing yet, okay? Feet got a little flare in them, fairly narrow stance. What you're doing, you're taking your forward bend here, your hip hinge, and you're learning how to rotate it and stand up. Rotate it, stand up, buns underneath you, fantastic arms together, right? So one of the checkpoints, buddy, is that You've got some side bend. I would come over to you and I'd push your arms trying to collapse you, but I don't want you to let me. I want you to keep this law of a triangle. As I push, you resist. So you've got a gentle sense of push to that point. I can try to collapse. You can't do it, okay? So I always find that I have way more success teaching people how to understand where semi-follow-through is. Now, as we start to add a little rhythm to semi-follow-through, great. We look at this. What do you notice about the club face? Toe's pretty much in the air over here, isn't it, right? If I just walked you back to a dress, notice how that's pretty square? Mm -hmm. 
a lot of golfers, newbies, try to take the face and they try to hit it straight down a line. What is that doing to the face, buddy? Open up. Opening it a ton, isn't it, right? So once you realize that address square here as you rotate and stand up, tucking your buns, let that right foot kind of come off the ground just a tick more, that's kind of your top of your semi follow through, okay? When you hit harder shots, the club's momentum is going to hinge these hands, bend these elbows, the club's going to go over here, and then maybe you respond back to here. But let's see that one more time on your own. Take your hands off for me. Let's see how you do just building your grip by itself. Key elements in the grip, people, as you know, there's my hand. Whoop, I'm getting the screen here. Okay, there's the hand. This part right here, if you slide down your pinky finger, that's the heel pad, not your thumb pad, not that... I call that thing right there like a chicken leg, okay? The heel pad is slide right down your pinky. That's a heel pad. Now, let's make sure that this heel pad, take the right hand away just for a sec. Let's get this heel pad, pardon me, a little bit more on top. There we go. Dynamite, let's put this right hand on. Pinky finger, just to hang on just a sec. Good, good. Nice. See how that, see how that feels just a bit more in the fingers than you're accustomed yeah. to? And then soften this up, man, way softer. Beautiful, arms in front of you, good. Feet closer together, narrow little stance. Feet flurry, good. Okay, so now let's go take you again to that semi follow through, tuck your buttons. There you go, good, hold this there, that a boy. Perfect. Now we're gonna do this again, but I'm gonna let you have a little bit of backswing speed. Ah, good try there, right? So what did I see there? I saw Steven kind of go, woo, move those hips. Now I don't want you to glide over here, not at that wedding dance yet. This is a little rotation, buddy. Little rotation, not a, not a hip bump, okay? That dances later. Okay, narrow stance, flare that right foot, fantastic. As we develop this little bit of backswing, pelvis just rotates, nice. Go to that spot, tuck your buns, eyes are up, you look great. Do that on your own, let me see it. Cool, one more time. Let me help this rotation, go for it. Good. So here's one of the things. Take a step over to there, buddy, real quick, okay? Doing awesome. So you saw Steven, and we're gonna have him get into some fun here. Steven building his grip, doing a great job. Hips try to go this way, okay? Try to go away from the target. Well, when hips go away from the target, guess what you're doing? That golf ball may as well be moving. That golf, when I move to the right like this, I'm moving the golf ball to the left. The more I move the golf ball forward in my stance, the only way I can really hit it is to learn how to come steep and over the top on the thing. And a lot of you do that. So what we're looking for, take a look at the Tour Striker logo behind me, the R in Tour. There's no covering up that R. This swing, my hips rotate and I actually expose a little bit more of that R during my backswing, okay? So getting a, this is the first time I've actually given you any kind of pointers, right? You've, you've watched the episode, you've produced the episode. Doing an awesome job for me. Come on back in here for a sec. Let's get that left hand on there, buddy. Heel pad on top. There you go. Doesn't that feel more secure? Thumbprint on the top right quadrant. Awesome. Put that right hand on. Pinky finger. Good. And so you you're have a tendency to go a bit too palmy. So a little bit more in the fingers, bud. There we go. That's good looking. And we got some nice arms. Now, go ahead and set the ball, club head behind the ball. And let your eyes kind of wander to that television for a second. What letter relationship do you see? See the R right there? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So make a backswing for me and do not, there you go, but we need some rotation. Good, do it again. Okay, cool, do that one more time. One more time, go ahead. I'm just not gonna, don't put that up boy. Don't let yourself go way to the right with your upper body, okay? So I'm seeing a guy, step over there for a second, then we'll have some fun. I'm seeing a guy trying to do turn his forward flex, okay? So Steven's a legit newbie. Good athlete, so he had some of this stuff and he's taking his forward flex and he's turning it to the right. Here's a little eye opener for you guys. And a lot of you guys out there in golf land, check this out. If I put an aim stick behind my belt, get over the golf ball, this, so this is cutting me right in half vertically, okay? As I'm going into a backswing, I'm in a forward flex because you can see this stick behind me. But during a backswing, I don't just turn a forward flex. That's what a really high handicapper broccoli chopper is gonna do, okay? What we wanna feel is a more centered pivot. This is me and my forward flex. As I go into my backswing, I'm actually 
extending, stretching this trail side keeps my head very centered, turns my hips more sharply. But what it does is it takes a lot of that out. This stick is getting straighter, even though I'm not standing up. Okay, same thing on the through swing. This stick is now no longer between my legs, and it's basically vertical, which is proof that I've stood up with a part of my body, and I've side bent with the other part of my body. So that's a lot to digest, but let's just have some fun, okay? Let's get into some rhythm. Do me a favor here. There's no bad shots here, and I will tease you later over a adult beverage. I'm gonna introduce you to this little rhythm device. Do me a favor, grab your putter for me. So what I'm putting in front of you guys is called the reflex arc. The reflex arc is kind of a little training device. And this should be, this should make up some great social media right here because golf balls will probably ping pong in my studio all over the place. I'm gonna give Steven a little reference on where these balls are gonna arrive, kind of over that little powdery spot that I put there. And let me demonstrate this. I've got, come on over here, Steven. I've got it set at a, basically a two to one ratio, kind of a pitch shot because I want him to get into this feeling. Oh, I should put one in the chamber first. There we go. Now we've got one locked and loaded. So these balls are gonna present over this spot in a certain timing. Now I expect you to hit these all over the room, which is fine, okay? But what we're looking for is, let's take you into this semi follow through, that feeling that we just did a moment ago, okay? We're gonna add some rhythm by adding a little flow to a backswing and then connecting to that spot. Now I am gonna have you hit a few putts first, okay? So come on in here for a sec. Do me a favor, grab that putter, hold it off the ground about an inch. Okay, perfect. So go ahead and move the paddle back and the ball is gonna present. Good. Now, so see how you're a little too slow there? Perfect, right? So we're gonna put this back Let's let's go ahead and, and do me and when you move this back, let me hit it for you. You just hold no, you hold on to the putter. I'm gonna move you, okay? Let's do it again. So you start to get a feel for this pace. Good, let's try it again. So Steve, whoop, so this is a very sensitive paddle. Get that one out of the way. Hold on one second, buddy. Ready? Good, so that's a relationship of timing, okay? Let's reload this, let's put the putter away. Grab your nine iron. And let's do it again. Let's add a little rhythm to this nine iron stroke. Now, go ahead and get that left hand on. Heel pad on top. So I'm gonna stop you every single time and go, mm, not really, sorry bud. So take your hand off, okay? Relax, soften this thing up, man. This part I'm squeezing right here, that's the heel pad. That is gentle on top of the grip, soft. That's an old school oil can, okay? I'm putting some in here, you get me? Okay, good, soft. Now this is right hands of fingers grip, gentle, and then restful, awesome. Arms on top, great. So this club's gonna go, ball's gonna present, we're gonna hit it as best we can. This right leg's gonna join the journey and it's gonna look something like this, okay? And poor Steven's like, oh my God, Martin, people are watching this. This is when Cheryl is just having a, just a, she's probably dying at home right now, his lovely aunt, operations manager. All right, so let's have a little fun. This club's gonna come back, okay? Listen for the beep. Don't even hit this one. Okay, watch those hips, hippie boy. Do this again. Okay, good. Hold on one second here. Now do your best, mister. Go for it. Good try, perfect. Now hold on. Here's what I asked you to do, right? We're gonna do this again. Every one of these, hold this over here. Narrower stance, buddy. Bring those feet more together. Good, set your, set your address again. Narrow stance, flary feet, okay? Let's take our hands off. Let's rebuild this heel pad on top. Amazing. Go to the end of the club. Good. Put that right hand on. Nice and soft. Good. Fantastic. Every one of these. I don't care if you miss. 
the club's going to pass over this white dot, and you're going to stand right here, head up, and take a moment, okay? Good. Buns under you. Awesome. Let's do it again. Let's put this guy back locked and loaded. Give me one quick sec. Give it a try. Look at you, baby. Woo! Look at that. Let's do this again. Put this back. Good. Perfect. Hang on. Let's do it again. So what we're doing, everybody out there, is we're giving him a... Oh, I'm, an, I'm stopping you. This is what I do at golf school. I will not let you mangle this grip. Good. Restful hands. Got it? Yep. Good. Oil it up a bit. Awesome. Volleyball arms. Get ready to go. I'll get out of your way. Hold your amazing finish. Very nice. Look at you go. Good. Now, the only thing I'm going to add to this, okay, good athlete here, doing a great job, is as you collect the golf ball developing this rhythm, you know, get those buns a bit more under you, right? Let this trail leg get drug along a bit more up under the toe. You're doing fantastic. One little tweak here, heel pad on top, grip organized. Good. Club down. Let's put the paddle back. There we go. Feel the rhythm of this. Good, fantastic. So let's just do this, bud. No paddle. Get organized, no paddle. You pretend you move the paddle back, let the ball get in the way. Hey, look at that. You, you did a better job hitting a moving ball than a stationary ball, right? So here's the joke about that. And this is a big, big deal, you guys out there in modern golf world, the Martin Chuck. We went from having more success with this thing coming at us than when the ball was stationary. So the athletic response, he went to a moment of, man, okay, stationary ball, hit ball. No, no, feel that rhythm, feel that flow. This metal thing has loft on it. If that metal thing, that weight, you know, has a relationship with the ground at the right time, guess what you get? Functional shot, okay? Rebuild this grip, heel pad on top, thumbprint where? Top right quadrant. These fingers, relax there, mister. Nice, there's a good looking pair of golf mitts. Lovely. Paddle back. Let's do a couple more. Feel the rhythm of this. Good try. Better rhythm. Do it again. Look at you. Okay. Ready? You want me to go beep beep for you? I'm happy to make the sounds if it helps you. Beep beep. All right. So really nice. So teaching rhythm, you guys, is tricky in golf. Okay. Product reflex arc, it's great. I love it. My buddy George Goebel this took 10 years in working with this, and I was happy to help him with some insights and stuff, and I'm thrilled to use it. So I'm going to just wear you out a little bit with this thing. Can you put this on, mister, if you don't mind? Let me make that fit you. Pop that over your hat. Great. I appreciate you representing Nike today. You look awesome. Let's set this aside. Good stuff. Could you see? Could you feel that sense of rhythm? And, and just the athleticism required to kind of make that thing work. Good. Now narrow this stance up. We're not riding a horse into town. Yeehaw! Okay, let's get, yeah, exactly. It's not, we don't want this hippie stuff. Remember, the pelvis turns sharply. You know, it turns kind of this oval of our belt. Turns kind of in place. Tucks up under us to a finish. Good. Now, we kind of got some rhythm in there. Okay. Let's see how we do with... This grip of yours, oh boy. I can tell them stop by and visit you just to get these hands on here every time. And teachers out there, do this. Don't let people get away with bad grips. Come on now. Good, put that right hand on. Fingers. Yes. And cuddly, cuddly, cuddly. I'm gonna square that face a bit. Beautiful. Okay, good. Now give me the same little shot. Hold this ball, hold your finish. And think of the beeps. Think of the rhythm you just put on there. Go for it. Okay, now don't move. Is this really where I wanted the club to finish? No. No. So then guess where we're going to finish to? A little more side bent to here. Right? So know where you're going. If it's like, like, like let's program this into Google. Pardon me for a sec. Go to your device and go, okay, where am I going, Google? I'm going to, to semi-follow through. I'm going to go to this semi-follow through. That's it. I've got this sense of rhythm. Beep, beep. Just semi follow That's where my destination is. Don't overshoot your destination and miss where you're going. Okay, cool. Let's get this left hand on here. 
Heel pad on top, face nice and square. Thumbprint, good, don't squeeze this man, soft. People out there, if I had one of those grippy grip devices, this guy would be crushing this poor grip. Your grip did nothing to you. There you go, restful hands, perfect. Soft, Mr. Soft, gets groovy. Here's your dot, move back a bit for me, please. Back, 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 good. You look, that looks fantastic. So know where you're going, go to your, go to your little position, feel that rhythm, hit a little shot. Don't move. Okay. So see all this stuff? Mm -hmm. Guess what, golfers? T pretty typical. You can relax. The reason he can't manage himself and stop, you know, kind of at his destination or, or my prescribed position for him is he's trying to use too much of his strong man hands. And he is strong. And he's holding this club like, and it needs to soften up. These things are like just heavy heavy ropes and leather. It's not, they're gonna muscularly activate when they need to to hold the club. Right now he's a little nervous probably being out here taking his first little lesson. I don't blame him actually, I'm really intimidating, I know. I know. But get those hands on there and how we move this thing, it's a little bit more fluid to, right there. Let's give it one more try, but this is, gonna, you're gonna be a fantastic golfer, bud. Heel pad on top, thumb print, not squeezy squeeze, easy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, there you go. Fingers restful, gorgeous, dynamite. Feet a little closer together. Flare the feet a little bit, good. Feel a sense of rhythm. Hold your finish, side bent and beautiful. Let's show off for everybody out there, shall we? Easy peasy, hold your finish. Good try, that's why I put that board there. Yeah. Perfect, let's do it again. That just saves my wallet a little ding that my son and myself have hit a few times. So you wouldn't be the first to do that. So back up a little teeny weeny bit. Good. Put some rhythm in this and go to your finish. Good try. So viewers out there, here's, the, here's what you're seeing. Take a step over there, bud. Despite coaching, okay, you can still see Steven's got a little of this, right? So it's like, but Martin, you told him, you told him just to kind of turn his hips a bit more sharply and he'd be, and so what's Steven doing? He's defaulting to what he's always done, which is some kind of booty motion this way. So, you know, I'm not going to take up all the time about the why you suck episode, but there's elements with Steven that he's going to be an awesome golfer, no doubt about it. Super strong, very flexible. Right now, doesn't really know how to govern the weight of the golf club because he's holding on like it's somebody's, it's his last cracker and he's starving. Okay, so he's got to soften this thing up and learn how to have this sense of rotation in this pelvis rather than this glidey kind of behavior. Because right now his intent says, move to the right, help the ball up in the air. And what we're gonna learn how to do is kind of feel more weight in the club head, the sense of how things can be a little softer and how we can arrive in this great finish. So let's do one more, okay? Take this club, hold this club across your waist, just like this. Push it in there quite a bit. A little lower. Good, bend over a little bit. Good. Take a look on the TV screen. See your right leg by the R? Mm -hmm. Good. Watch that screen as you keep that club pinned against your, your waist and turn that the pelvis. That a boy, Are you? that's better. Good, do it again. See that pelvis isn't pushing, isn't coming toward me. It's rotating, do it again, good. That's a rotation within its kind of origin here. There you go, do it again. That's a boy, and then it rotates and goes up into a finish. A little different feel, right? One's rotational, lots of power in rotation. This lateral stuff, that's great for the wedding, okay? But we need a bit of this in the golf swing, okay? Let's see it. Okay, oh, watch yourself. Interesting, right? Rotate, good. Right leg gets a little longer, that's better. Good, do it again. Awesome, good stuff. So you've got some stuff to work on, don't you, my friend? Certainly do. Give me some knuckles, buddy. You guys, I know you're like, hey, Steven, way to go, man. So working on your game, you could see this is developing a golfer. Golf is not easy, people, and, and kudos to Steven for coming up here, getting in front of you. And letting, I've never even watched him hit it before, except that one video. I knew his history in, his history in uh, sport is a good one as a good athlete, but you can see that 
in this situation. You know what other, other thing is? I guarantee you he was nervous, right? He's like, oh, my God, my friends are going to be watching this. I want to do a good job in front of Martin. I don't want him to fire me. You're fired. I'm kidding. No, you did a great job. But what I want is let's get these good hands on there. In Stephen's case, a little softer. And it's tough to be soft when you don't have trust. Okay, we hold on for dear life and we try to control. Hold on to this thing, caveman, right? But with Stephen, we're trying to we're gonna try to create this rotation rather than this glidey to cover up the whole tour of tour striker over there and then feeling the weight of the golf club with a bit more organized arms. And the funny thing was he actually hit it better, hit more reliable strikes when the balls were rolling at him rather than when we gave him time to think. And that's where golf gets to, right? We have static behaviors and we have these active behaviors, like static ones. We stand over the golf ball, bump, bump, and you go through this massive checklist. But when I just roll something, you get an athlete up here and you get balls rolling toward him, guess what happens? Athletic response takes over. And if he hit a, you know, maybe 50 or 60 on this, it would get better and better and better and better. And it's just a lovely way to take somebody from static and too, too much thought to athletic and a little bit more dynamic flow. Now, like any lesson, I'm going to say, okay, you know what? Maybe a bit of smart ball, maybe a bit of plane mate, maybe a little wrist educator, power click. Whatever external device helps that golfer build awareness and start to shore up some of those little pieces, and that's, that's, that's a big deal. Now, we're getting way along in the episode, so I want to just kind of get into your homework, okay? Homework, day one, walk-in routine. Let's talk about walk-in routine. Every shot st starts from back here. And I'm a little closer to the ball than I'd normally be because of the framing of my room here. But everyone, put a ball in place, use a T-square, walk into the golf ball. This is, again, this is called zero. When both feet are together and I'm basically perpendicular to the golf ball, and you can see that because I'm standing kind of with my golf ball location stick right here. This is called the golfer's toolbox, by the way. We sell these. I use them in every lesson because it's a simple way to know where your target line is, and it's a simple way to know where your ball location is. So here is zero. Step one, trail foot goes up a skosh. So we can bend over for step two, which is getting your club face organized, not on the ground, off the ground, but I can still aim my face off the ground. That's step two, club face and hands. Step three, left foot goes to the left for ball location. Step four, right foot drops back for stance width. And then there's that little waggle. And once we kind of settle in, club's still off the ground, we go ahead and hit a little shot. Okay, so that's homework day one. Let's see you, and you go to the range, give me 20 of these to find in really, really specific walk-ins. A little bit of a banana shape walk-in to zero. Step one. Oh, and by the way, when you walk in, you know what's really nice? If we can get this lead hand on properly, let's go ahead and check that box. So a lot of you watch Justin Rose, guess he builds that grip right here. He's got that, that's checked off. So when he walks in, he goes to zero. He doesn't have to fuss with his lead hand. It's already perfect. So zero, one, two, three, four. Waggle, waggle, clubs off the ground. I feel the weight of this thing. And then go ahead and hit it. Okay, that's... That's, that's day one, that's your practice. Day two, cornerstone drills. Cornerstone drills, pretty much what we did with Steven, okay? Cornerstone is kind of understanding, I use a silly acronym, acronym called KFAT, K-F-A-T. What's KFAT mean? Well, it means keister, watch this little shot. Okay, here's the cornerstone, KFAT, okay? So as I hit this little shot, and I hold my, finishing form. Keister, this thing, it's forward. My buns are basically forward of where the ball was a moment ago on that spot. Keister forward, and then the AT of the KFAT, arms together. So that's like holding a smart ball right there, KFAT. Say KFAT to yourself, kind of fun. Okay, say it five times fast. Anyway, that's day two, okay? Then on to day three, back, step, and strike. Had a great guy out for a day lesson the other day. He had the orange whip. I love the orange whip. I have one in my bag over there. Okay, got a bunch of clubs and random bags. So here he was doing his orange whip warm up. Had his orange whip and he was going like this. Do 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 do
was synchronized with his downward motion of the orange whip. Okay, you know what an orange whip is, an orange thing at the end of a stick, right? Counterbalance, my, my buddy Jim Hackenberg invented it. So he was doing this. Makes good sense. He didn't know I was watching. I recorded a video as I walked up to you know start the lesson. And I said, hey, I'm glad you're warming up, but let's talk about how we really kind of shift our weight in golf, okay? While something is going back, something is already going forward. That tensions the body nicely. So here's back step and strike. And this is what I want you to do on day three. Get yourself organized, okay? And what we're gonna do is take our lead foot, put it beside our trail foot. While the club is going back, step and strike. Because we need this reflexive event to kind of self-tighten things. I'd say one of the biggest boo-boos we see at the golf school is people don't have the athletic response to where the golf ball is, okay? Steven does it great. He just moves himself way too far to the right in order to have good success hitting it off the ground. So I heard him talking to Jared in the room too. He said, man, I really can't hit my irons. And now that I watch him, I'm like, well, no kidding, man, because you just moved the golf ball way over there. How about we just kind of keep the golf ball where it's at by having a center relationship to it? Stephen poking fun at you. Just beginning, people, wait for the next few episodes. We're going to have good fun. So back up and strike, get organized. Lead foot to trail foot, step. So while the club is going back, I'm stepping. That's tensioning my body. I'll do it one more time. Get yourself where you can hit it. Get waggly. Put that lead foot up there. Back, step, strike. And you know what? If you want, use a little T for these two. You don't have to hit them off the ground. Try to feel that action reaction of a back step and strike. Okay, day four, elevated T. Let me show you what's up with this. Let me grab a T, and this is a great, great drill. You know what I've noticed? Foley, Sean Foley, a friend of mine from a oh, great coach, coaches one of the world's best coaches, coach Tiger Woods, coaches Danny Willett, Justin Rose for a long time. Here's a great one, elevated T drill. And you say, well, why, why is that so cool, Martin? Well, I tell you why, because if you can learn how to hit this thing, off the middle of the face, when it's elevated, I just put a little Dr. Scholl's impact spray on there. Actually, it's Dr. Scholl's foot odor spray, but it works really well for transferring the, imp the impact of the golf ball. Getting the club hovered helps with your waggle. Then let's see how I do in my strike. So elevated T-drill. And I dare say that wasn't too shabby. Right there, let me just turn off that camera so you can see that strike right there. Not too bad. So the elevated strike, that was a hair high. Now it could have been better people, right? So you, you look at that and go, that was pretty good, Martin. But guess what, that was a hair high. If that was on the ground, might have been a wee bit chunky. Now the benefit of this, you're gonna have a very good sense of, was it too high in the face? Was it too low in the face? Was it toey, was it healy? Oh, and by the way, when it's up here in the air like this, you're not mashing down. You're probably not trying to hit up too much. It's a great way to feel your swing swoosh through the bottom without worrying about the turf too much. So put a T, like a super, let me grab this T, do it one more time. I love Steven, by the way, just as a, he brought those foam balls into the studio because he didn't want to ping pong golf balls around the studio. It's like, buddy, my son has his little buddies in here and it's, I'm, I'm amazed that the monitors and all this stuff's not broken. So it's elevated, waggly. That's elevate, this ball's off the ground. It's a four iron, by, by the way. Let's go ahead and see if I can get one a little bit more solid. And that was better. That was dead nuts in the middle of the face. You'll have to trust me. I think you can see that a little bit right there. So final, final work. Windows in the sky. Windows in the sky. I'm kidding, that's not, that's some. Um, what is that? The doors, I can't even remember. But so windows in the sky, you guys, and I'm running out of time here. But let's go to, let's go to Foresight. And Mo Norman, famous Canadian golfer, great ball striker. Let's go full screen for a second here, okay? As I'm talking, I'm gonna, this is an eight iron, and we're gonna look at, um, I want, man, I wonder what view would be best to see this. But I'll just make this pretty vivid. By, I'll hit this little shot here. Too many balls on the screen, there we go. Is that better? Hold on, Foresight, come on. 
Come on, there we go, okay. Ball's ready to go. Here's kind of a lowish shot, okay? Go, uh, go to cameras just for a quick sec. I don't have the ball back in my stance, but now let's go back to full screen foresight. As I hit this shot, okay, this is gonna be kind of a low flighted trajectory, right? So that, you know, it's, it's, it flew 140 something in the air. I'm getting pretty warmed up here. That's not a really high golf ball. Okay, the distance, so there you go. So I didn't try to hit a masher and I smashed it. Went straight as you can point, right? The trajectory on this, the height, the ball height, where is it? I can't, I can't see it. Anyway, it was a very, very effective strike out the middle of the face. So windows in the sky, you guys, is, is really to mess with trajectory. Let's go to camera, Steve. Mess with trajectory, because I hit that shot great. And it was just a sense of trying to hit it just a little bit lower. It was actually the best eight iron I hit with not even that much club head speed. So it goes to show you, you know, you can have a ton of speed and have an inefficient strike. And, you know, for this show, it's seven in the morning in Arizona time. I wish I could tell you, I get up and do calisthenics, walk the dog, do my errands, come in here, hit balls for half an hour and start the show. But I don't. I roll out of bed. I put some clothes on. I got hat head. I got bed head. I put a hat on. And here we go. We do the show. Okay. So the, my strikes from earlier in the show weren't as efficient as that one. That was a great one. But the whole idea of windows in the sky is can you kind of hit different windows, different trajectories? And then when you get really brassy, go ahead and see if we can curve them left to right, right to left. And you know what? We'll do a shot shaping episode. Put that in Steven's to-do list to do a shot shaping episode. That'd be fun, right? And shot shapes are great if you have some command over your swing. So. We're going to do a wrap up. I want to thank you guys for watching Modern Golf with Martin Chuck, episode 11. That's awesome, episode 11. I can't believe we're this far along. Um, summary. We talked about tour level swings. We talked about, you know, getting organized. You know, we had Steven out here in the Why You Suck portion of the show. And I would say Steven like, was like turned to steel with the club in his hands. I want to leather him up. There's, it's funny, you know, you have to have mechanics first to have feel. So I can appreciate the rigidity of them. But once the mechanics are in, we have to learn how to soften things up so the club can have a bit more freedom and flow. You can't really build mechanics through feel. You have to build feel from mechanics. And that's tricky because you feel uncomfortable building feel through being mechanic, mechanized, but that's how good golfers do it. So building those things, remember, that key delivery position with the aim stick right here was a very eye-opening event of how you build your swing from P6, this delivery position that all good players look at as they unwind and collect the golf ball before the momentum overtakes and takes them to a finish. That's a great way to do it. Now, if you go to Golf Pass, okay, go to Golf Pass, Golf Channel's product Golf Pass. I'm one of the coaches on there. We did a Breaking 90 series, and I know you might think, well, Breaking 90 is no big deal. Trust me, you count, all your, you count every shot you hit and you break 90, you're a pretty good golfer. So I did a Breaking 90 series. There's a lot of great content on there in Golf Pass. Go to my Breaking 90 series. A lot of good stuff produced by my buddy Dave Lavery. It was, he did a great job on that, so I'm proud of that work. Breaking 90 on Golf Pass. Um, thank you to my sponsors, Nike Golf, keeping me looking fly. Okay, with the clothes and the hats and the shoes. Thank you so much, Nike. And Hanma, we're going to do a little what's in the bag next week, babies, because this stuff is fantastic. I love my new gear from Hanma. Thanks so much. And Foresight Sports, thank you guys. And we're going to send it off, and I'm going to hit a couple of eight irons. And you have a lovely week. Stay safe out there, everybody.